Welcome 1200 to today's virtual lab. What we get to do is DC circuits. We're going to do part one and part two all in this video here. Traditionally, it's been a two week lab, so uh, there's going to be a lot of material covered. But um, as I understand, you'll have two weeks to do it. Uh, read page 12 to the top of page 25 in your lab manual and um, be sure to understand it. If uh, it, 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 you, it, it, these concepts should be clear to you as we take the, uh, take the data. If you don't understand it, you're just gonna be cheating yourself. So um, now would be a good time to stop the video and go do that. So go do that. Let me put you on pause and get this circuit set up and we'll knock it out quick. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's see how quick we could do this first part. What we're gonna do is construct a simple circuit and you can find that circuit on page 22 of your lab manual. It's in figure three all the way to the right. Now, that is a, a very simple circuit. Let's forget about the ammeter and voltmeter connected uh, there for the, for the moment. Let's just focus on the battery or EMF source and the resistor and hook that up. By the way, on this breadboard here, you see three resistors. We need to do measurements for R1, R2, and R3 all separately, but I have them all mounted on the breadboard. But Again, we're just going to do one at a time. So here's our uh, power supply, our ammeter, our voltmeter. There's a digital multimeter there that we'll need in probably like 10 minutes. So forget about that for now. And I do realize that the um, uh, power supply is kind of um, out of frame, but we don't need to. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. Um, we mainly want to be able to see these two instruments and of course what we hook up to. So if I was to hook up this resistor to this power supply, I would simply just plug these two leads in. So there you go. There now is a current running through R1. I don't know what that is, but there is a current. If I want to know what it is, I hook up our analog ammeter uh, to this circuit. And when I do that, I basically want to measure the current going through this wire here. So I need to hook this up in series with R1. If I was to hook this up across R1, in other words, in parallel, I wouldn't know what, uh, what current was going through it. In fact, I'd probably damage that instrument there. So let's hook it up in series. I'll plug that in there. And let me get another wire here. There we go. You notice the needle jumped. There is indeed a current going through R1 and we could measure it with that um, ammeter. Now, I also wanna know the voltage across R1 and that is what this guy is for. Unlike the ammeter, when we're measuring voltage across a resistor, we are gonna hook that up in parallel or in other words, across it. So, I'll simply plug these two wires in there and you can see the uh, voltmeter uh, needle uh, jumped up a bit. So for our current, I am measuring, uh, let's see, looks to me like, by the way, I'm not going to zoom in and have you guys read this needle for each measurement. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll read it for you guys. Plus, if the camera isn't like dead on, you won't be able to read that needle accurately. So what I'm seeing is um, <clears throat> 0.53, 0 0.53, but we are on this scale here, on the 0.5 scale. So I need to divide by 10, which gives us 0 0.053, 0 0.053 amps. And um, 
If, if you look at your table on page 25, let me go ahead and help you fill that out. On the top of that table, it says nominal value. The nominal value of this resistor is 110, 110 uh, ohms. And for I1, the value of that we just measured, it is 0 0.053 amps. The scale that we are on is the 0.5. And now we need to uh, write down the error associated with this measurement. When, when we're on this um, scale here, the error would be 0 0.005 amps. And um, I won't go into why because it's all in your lab manual. Now, the fractional error, that would be nothing more than the ratio between the error and the value you read. So it would be 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.053, which I did the calculation and that comes out to 0 0.094. I kept it to two significant figures because we have two significant figures in our, in our value. Uh, the error, of course, only has, it looks like it only has one significant figure, but I'm treating that as like a pure number. It's, it's, it, it has infinite precision because that's just the error associated with that measurement. Now for units, let's just stick to amps. Every time I make a measurement, I'll just call it an amp. In other words, I'm not going to... Uh, throw out like milliamps or microamps. We'll keep it easy. And um, the same thing for volts and ohms. I'm never going to talk about mil milliohms or milliamps or, or millivolts. Um, just, uh, just to make it easy for us. So for our voltage, I am getting a reading 6.0. And we are, we are on the 15. So the error associated with that would be 0.5. And I said I wasn't going to mention this because it's in your lab manual. But if on, on the 15 scale, each tick mark represents 1 volt. And um, our error would be half the amount that each tick mark represents. So half of one volt is 0.5 volts. So that's how we get the plus or minus 0.5. The fractional error, again, is just 0.5 divided by 6.0 to two significant figures. That is 0 0.083. Now, the next, um, the next row on that table is your R1. <clears throat> and because it says NA on the scale, um, it looks like they want you to determine that mathematically uh, with equation one. So R1 would be V1 divided by I1. Now, I'm getting 110 which is 6.0 divided by 0 0.053. And the reason I'm getting 110 is because we kind of have to keep it to or adhere to uh, the uh, significant figures that we're working with, right? The volts only has two significant figures, so how can I report my answer in resistance with, with three significant figures? So. Um, I know it looks a little weird if you put down 110, but I really can't claim I know what that third digit is. Uh, let's see. Now we need the error uh, for that calculation. And you might have to review um, the concept of uh, propagation of error. Maybe, maybe not. Um, a way to figure it out is to take the fractional error of your I and square it. Take the fractional error of your V and square it. 
add them two together, and then take the square root. And that gives you the fractional error of your R calculation. So for my fractional error of my R calculation, I got 0.13 adhering to significant figures with those other fractional error values. So how do I get the overall error in my R? Well, I just calculated the fractional error, which is 0.13. So I'm going to multiply that by the value I calculated for R, which is 110. So 110 times 0.13, again, to two significant figures is 14. So my error for my R1 is plus or minus 14 ohms. Um, I could have just kept my mouth shut and gave you the amps and volts, but if you haven't done uh, propagation of error in a while, you know, I could see how this table may be confusing, confusing, confusing especially when you uh, come across the column that says fractional error. So anyway, hopefully you found that helpful. Now, moving down that table, we are at R2, where it says I2, V2, R2. So the nominal value of R2 is 220 ohms. And we are going to do the same thing with R2, but much quicker and easier. We just move the connections on over that breadboard there. And if you notice, amps drop down to zero. Now, that doesn't mean that there are zero amps going through R2. It just means that we need a more sensitive scale. Now, I still got zero amps, and there aren't any amps coming through R2 because I didn't plug into R2. I plugged into the left. I plugged into these two ports, and there's nothing connected here. So let me move on over again. <clears throat> R2, we have amps. By the way, so we still needed a larger scale. You see, um, how that needle didn't move much, it's still uh, over to the left. If we put it to a more sensitive scale, it moves more towards the center. So let's see how, how much current is going through R2. I am reading 2.70. Now, of course, we are on a different scale. We are on the 0 0.05, so I need to divide that by 100. So the current going through R2 is 0 0.0270 amps. And the scale, like I just mentioned, is 0 0.05. The error associated with that particular scale, as explained in your lab manual, would be 0 0.0005. Fractional error. Well, you could do that calculation. Um, v, V2, what is the voltage across R2? Again, I'm getting 6.0 volts. And I did not uh, move the scale, so we're still on 15. And again, the error associated with that particular scale is 0.5. did the same thing again. <laughs> Moved it to two ports that weren't connected to anything. So now we are indeed on R3. We have a new value for our current. And for that particular current, I am reading 1.8, it's a little bit over one. So I would read 1.81, but, 
again, we're on the 0 0.05 scale, so I need to divide that by 100. So what is the current through that R3 resistor? It is 0 0.0181. The scale, again, is 0 0.05. The error associated with that scale is, um, as we did before, 0 0.0005. Now, from that, you could determine the fractional error. And uh, again, that is nothing more than dividing or taking the ratio between 0 0.0005 and our measured value, which is 0 0.0181. And I am getting 0 0.0276. volts. So I am reading 6.1. Again, I am on the 15 scale. So my error is plus or minus 0.5. You could calculate the fractional error there. And um, the last line you could fill out as I showed you for the first resistor, R1. So now we have another table there. And let's see, it looks like most of that is just going to be copied directly off of that table we just filled out. You're going to do some comparisons, except for the, the uh, column labeled digital value. We did not get a digital value for our resistance. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, by the way, when you directly measure resistance across a component, one end of your component must necessarily be disconnected from the circuit. Otherwise, you're not, you're not going to get a, a, a true reading of the resistance or even possibly damage your instrument. So at least one end is disconnected. Doesn't hurt if both are disconnected. So let me just unplug um, our three from our circuit and just directly measure those resistances with our uh, multimeter. So let me walk around here and change the function from volts to resist um, ohms, which measures measures resistance and we'll start with R1 so I don't know if you can see that I don't even know if it's worth zooming in on But uh, we are getting a measurement of 109.92 for R1. 109.92. Now, for this uh, digital multimeter, the error would be half the value of the last digit. The last digit is in the hundreds place, and um, so it'd be half, half of that. 0.05. The error is plus or minus 0 0.05. Moving along to R2. <clears throat> um, our multimeter is measuring in kilo ohms, but we're going to report that in just regular ohms. So R2 would be a value of uh, 218.6, 218.6 ohms. And since the last digit is in the tenth place, the error would be plus or minus 0.5. Let's go ahead and measure. 
five three. And we're getting 328.3, 328.3 ohms, and the air would be plus or minus 0.5. And um, I, I indicated what the nominal values for these uh, resistors are, 110, 220, and 330. I didn't tell you what the tolerances are. The tolerances will be 5%. So each one has a tolerance of 5%, meaning they could be off in either direction, plus or minus by 5%. Um, that is it for this part of the um, for this part of the experiment. We are now going to turn our attention to combination of resistors. Now, uh, let me uh, get that set up, and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, here we are for the second part. Uh, turn to page 26 in your lab manual. I am looking at figure six. So we want to construct that circuit, which is nothing more than three resistors connected in series. Now, let me convince you that we do indeed have that. So I am going to follow uh, with the um, power supply. This is the uh, positive this is coming out of the positive uh, port of the power supply and it is going directly into our ammeter now it is coming out of the ammeter and going right into R1 now the other end of R1 right here goes into the bottom of R2 so it goes through R2, and right at the top here, I have a wire that goes to the top of R3. Following R3 along here, I have a wire that goes back to our power supply. So these three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, are just connected uh, back to back to back uh, in, in series. So we're getting a current that's going through those three res uh, resistors. And the current that um, I'm reading here is 0.91. But remember, always uh, take note of the scale that you're on. By the way, let's move to that uh, table. Uh, it is on page 20, 27 of your lab manual, table 3. So there you go, I. The value of I, our current, I had mentioned it was 9.1, but we are on the 0 0.05 scale, so I need to, need to divide it by 100, which means our current is 0 0.0091 amps. The scale, like I mentioned, is 0 0.05. The error, I'll let you determine that, and our units are amps. Oh, by the way, so... The next box over to the right is resistance from equation one. What I'm going to do in my lab manual is block that out. It doesn't make any sense that you're supposed to put something there. And it'll make sense when you complete this table. So uh, next thing to do is measure the voltages across different parts of this circuit. What we're going to do is first measure the voltage across R1. And I'll do that with our analog voltmeter. I am going to connect the red wire to the top. Um, by the way, when you're using an analog meter, you, the, the, like the, the polarity, the, the potential difference needs to be, um, you need to keep that in mind. If I connected, say, this port here to the lower potential in the zero or ground to the higher potential, the needle would want to go in the opposite direction. And that's how things break. Anyway, higher potential is at this point here. Lower potential is on the other side of R1. And 
Let's see if we could do better than that. I'm going to move this down. Yes, <clears throat> that'll give us a better reading. I've moved it to a more sensitive scale. So the voltage across <clears throat> R1, so we're measuring right now V1. I am reading 1.01. .01. And the scale I am on is three. And you should be able to determine what the error associated with that scale is. Okay, it's plus or minus 0 0.05. Units, volts. Oh, okay, so now as you move along that table see that box there you're supposed to determine what the resistance is from equation one so from equation one which is ohm's law right v is equal to i r you can use the measured current and measured voltage to determine what the resistance of r1 is so by the way when i calculated it i got 110 plug this in your calculator and yes you are going to get something different but I, I just can't bring myself to write down a resistance with um, a, an actual digit in the ones place because after all our current only had two significant figures so if I divide uh, V by I can I really report the answer to three significant figures so it may look odd to you um, and who is whoever it, if you do in fact report it as 110 you know hopefully whoever is grading your lab manual doesn't just rush through it and think hey wait a minute where did, how did they get that but uh, let's assume they are credible <laughs> and uh, uh, so yeah technically it, it, it's 110 with that said let's move down to v2 V2 is the voltage across R2. And um, it, 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 of course, I'm not referring to any of your instructors. I, I mean, who knows who, who's, who's grading <laughs> your lab manual. Um, it may be like a, a, a GA or something. But anyway, uh, so high potential, low potential, potential dropped. And as it goes across R2, it's gonna drop again. So I know that this is the higher potential. This is the lower potential. And for V2, I am getting uh, 1.99. 1 1.99 actually <clears throat> I um, I measured this before and I got 1.99 but now okay let's let's be um, a little bit more rigorous here okay it's I'm getting something a little different I am getting two point 2.02 we're on the three scale so your error would be plus or minus 0 0.05 that's in volts and next determine what your resistance for R2 is uh, with equation one. Positive potential, it drops, so this is lower. Boom. Oh. That's not good for it. We are on the 15 scale and
I'm getting a reading of two point nine. So B three is two point nine. We are on the fifteen scale, and you should be able to determine the error associated with that scale being on the fifteen scale. Now V one V V one plus two plus three. In other words, I, now what we want to do is determine the voltage across all of those resistors. So, here's our last resistor, here's our first one. So the potential difference across all of them. That is 6.0 volts. The scale again is 15, we didn't move it, and you should be able to fill out the rest. By the way, that box all the way to the right for resistance, what resistance are they looking for? They want, like, the, uh, the resistance, well, of all of them together, or in other words, if you were to take those three out and just put one resistor that represented the three, the effective resistance, that would be what you're after. Uh, look at figure six on the right. See that R, oh, I said effective, what they're calling it is R equivalent, much better name than what I called it, R equivalent. And the rest of that table would be calculations slash analysis. In other words, no data for us to obtain here. So next is parallel resistors. And I'll put you on pause and get that circuit set up. Okay, moving right along, we are at the section called Parallel Resistors, and that is on page 28. Currently, I'm looking at figure seven, and that is the circuit we are to construct. Our R1, R2, and R3 connected in parallel. And I did my best to connect them in such a way that it resembles the uh, circuit diagram. And let's see how I did here. So. R1, R2, and R3, the top of those three resistors are connected with these small red wires to this long one up here. So the top of them are all connected together. And likewise with the black wires, all of the bottoms are connected together. Now this red wire simply goes right into our power supply, the positive uh, terminal and the bottom of the, these resistors with the black wire go into the negative terminal of our power supply. So it's hooked up, current is uh, flowing through this circuit here. The ammeter is not connected yet, the voltmeter is not connected yet, that's why we are getting zero reading on both. What we are to do is connect the voltmeter according to figure seven that is across all of them. So, what I simply do is <clears throat> higher potential in that port, lower or zero potential in the bottom here, and I get a voltage. And the voltage that <clears throat> I am getting, by the way, you should turn to page 26. That table there is the one uh, you'll be filling out for the data obtained in this section. The voltage there where it says value, I am getting 6.2 on that analog voltmeter and the scale is 15. And you should be able to figure out the error associated with that scale. Okay, it's plus or minus 0.5. And the units, of course, are in volts. So what we want to do now is to determine the amount of current going through R1. And to do so, again, with an analog or 
or digital ammeter, it doesn't matter. Whenever you're measuring current, you do not hook it up across a circuit element. Uh, that won't give you a correct reading. It'll damage your instrument. You need to connect it in series with that particular component. So let's see how much current is running through this wire that is directly plugged into R1. What I'll do is insert our ammeter, so to speak, into this wire. And I'll do that by temporarily unplugging this and plugging it into our ammeter, which is currently in the 0.5 scale. And the other end of the ammeter goes right into R1. So I have a current reading. I'm going to test the uh, more sensitive scale and it jumps beyond uh, the five so I can't use that so that's the best I can do and that <clears throat> is giving me a value of uh, 0.53 but it's on this middle scale the 0.5 so I need to divide by 10 so it is actually 0 0.053 amps as we mentioned, the scale is 0.5, and you could fill out the rest there. Now, I2, the current going through resistor 2. Before I do that, I need to disconnect this uh, from its current position. So I'll plug this back into R2. That's our original circuit. Now I want to insert this ammeter into this wire here that's going directly into R2. And I'm gonna see if I could use a more sensitive scale, and I can. So um, our voltage, our voltage is staying the same, right? We're connected across, um, uh, well, there's only one voltage reading that they asked for um, in this circuit. In fact, hmm. yeah, well, I mean, however you hook up that voltmeter, it's always going to be the same. So we just need to focus on the ammeter here. And for R2, our current is 2 0 0.70 but we are on this scale here the 0 0.05 so I need to divide by 100 so the current is 0 0.0270 amps <clears throat> scale again is 0 0.05 and you can fill out the rest now the current through R3 Disconnect the ammeter from that particular position and then put it in this wire, so to speak, the wire that's going directly into R3. And I am getting a reading of 1.80, but again, our scale is the 0 0.05, so I divide by 100 telling me that the current through R3 is 0 0.0180 amps, and the scale is 0 0.05. And now, the current through 1 plus 2 plus 3, if there's any confusion as to what that is, refer to figure 7. What I'm going to do is measure the current uh, going back to the uh, power supply. So let me disconnect our ammeter. There's our original circuit. So the bottom of the three resistors all go into this wire here and this is the point where I want to measure the current. So 
gonna unplug this from the power supply. I plugged it into our ammeter. The other end of the ammeter goes back into, into the power supply. The scale is too sensitive. And I'm getting a reading of 1.00 but I am on this scale here so I need to divide by 10 so it's 0 0.100 so the current I uh, subscript 1 plus 2 plus 3 would be 0 0.100 amps and the scale again is 0.5 now the table below the one we just filled out would be for analysis. So let me put you on pause and hook up the next circuit. For the next part of the lab, resistors in parallel and series. So this is where it gets, um, well, a little complicated to convince you that this is indeed the circuit that we're supposed to set up. The circuit diagram is uh, depicted in figure eight, page 29, and there is an R1, an R2, and, and an R3. I disconnected these, these resistors from the board and repositioned them so they resemble that diagram there so you can follow me. Out of my power supply here, this red wire, it is plugged directly into R1. Out of R1, the wire branches off into two directions. One goes into R2, the other goes into R3. And on the other end of both R2 and R3, those wires that come out are connected together again. In turn, that goes back to our power supply. So you can see that these two resistors are connected in parallel and this resistor is connected in series with this configuration. So let's go ahead and do, do our measurements. Uh, the first one is, let's do A1. Well, let me take a look at that table. Why don't you take a look at it as well? We are going to be, or you're going to be filling out uh, the table on page 30. Okay, so they start with the voltages. We'll start with the voltages then. V1 is the voltage across R1. Easy enough. Right across R1. And the way they have it, it I mean, it may look like they're connected here as opposed to here. It doesn't matter. This, all these wires are at the same potential. So that's given me approximately three volts. This has given me the same value. I could touch the resistor right there and it'll give me the same value. As long as I don't go across it. So, Every wire that is connected is the same voltage. It's going to be at the same potential. So I'm making it easy and just connecting it right across R1. So let me look at that analog voltmeter. And for V1 then, I'm getting... Two point seven two volts, and the scale <clears throat> I had it written down before. The reason I was able to get uh, three significant figures is because I had it on the the three scale, so that gives me more significant figures because I'm looking at the top scale so 
I am getting 2.72 volts. The scale is 3. So that's an error of plus or minus 0 0.05. Now, V2, that would be the potential across R2, which coincidentally is the same as whatever is across R3, just by virtue of how this circuit is connected. So I disconnected the uh, voltmeter and they want, I'm looking again, what was that, V2? I just want to just tap it to make sure the scale isn't too sensitive, which it was. So here we go. V2, the voltage across um, R2, is 3.4. 3.4 volts, and we are, are on the 15 scale. Now the voltage across the V1 and 2. And um, by the way, I'm doing a lot of moving around here, so I don't know if you could tell. I just noticed that I don't have my um, AirPods on. I think if I'm wearing them, the, the audio is more consistent. So if it sounds kind of funky uh, in this segment, bear with me. I'm going to put them on now. Okay, so uh, where were we? I believe V1 plus 2. So I want to know the voltage across resistors 1 and 2. Voltage across, here's resistor 1 and resistor 2. So the voltage across uh, those two resistors, 6.1, 6.1 volts, we are on the 15 scale, which gives us an error of plus or minus 0.5. So now we can forget about this voltmeter for now. So it's disconnected, it's not connected to anything. Now what we want to know are the currents. So I1 is our first current to measure. And what I can do is measure the current in this wire here, the one that's going into R1 to determine the current in R1. And I'll do that by just disconnecting the power supply temporarily. And plugging it here. And what I am reading is two point four five. We are on the point zero five scale, so we need to um, divide by a hundred. So I have point zero two four five amps, and the scale is point zero five. Now for I two, I'm looking at the diagram that is the current going into R1 let me briefly disconnect this ammeter and now reinsert it to determine the current going through R2 so it's as if I want to put the ammeter in here and I'll do that by connecting this to that reconnecting there so I2 1.50 again divide by 100 I2 is 0 0.0150 amps and the scale was 0 0.05 
now the current through R3. Reconnect that, that's our original circuit. And I want another current through. Let me double check R3. So I want another current in here. So that is 1.00, but again, the scale divide by 100. So it's 0 0.0100 amps, and that is on the 0 0.05 scale. By the way, so you don't have the best um, view of this equipment here. And I apologize for that. I mean, I'm not really set up to do a, I mean, some labs are more conducive than others as far as being visually stimulating. But um, this is a two-part lab. Typically, you'd be in the lab for three hours each session. So that's six hours of collecting data. And for this particular lab, believe me, everyone's there till the end of class. Um, and a lot of it is just figuring out exactly what they want you to hook up. So um, if this seems a little tedious, just keep that in, in the back of your head. I don't know how long this video is going to turn out to be, but I mean, let's say it's even an hour. We're knocking out six hours of you traditionally being in a lab taking data to just watching a video for one hour and watching me do it. So anyway, keep that in mind. Um, I've noticed that in the next section, they want you to, they want you to do those same voltage measurements, but this time with a um, digital voltmeter. So let me go ahead and turn that on. And I'm looking at uh, table six on page 31. Ah, you know what, sometimes this lab, these labs can be a little bit confusing depending on who, who, <laughs> who wrote them. Um, I, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. I don't know who wrote it. But uh, anyway, or maybe it's me. It's me. Uh, so looking at that table, uh, the second column there says analog value from equation one. Okay, so we just took a bunch, a bunch of uh, voltage and current measurements on analog instruments. And from those two measurements, we can determine uh, the value of R1 and the uh, equivalent resistor resistance of R2 and R3 connected in parallel. And then for the bottom, the equivalent for R2 and 3 connected in parallel while simultaneously being collected, connected in series with R1. So we can, we can use our equations to determine that. Uh, Ohm's law of V is equal to IR. Then it says digital value. And they want you to compare If they want you to compare two things, obviously those two things need to be the same thing. So we need to compare those calculated resistances with another set of resistances, but based on a digital voltmeter. So if you filled out that fourth column that's headed, to, that is, labeled digital value with our data that would be in voltages so how can you compare those voltages with the calculated resistances so it's like it, there should be two tables one where you can record your data for the digital 
voltmeter, the voltages we're going to measure right now, then you could use those uh, values to determine the resistances and compare those with the analog values of resistance. So, in other words, these voltage measurements that we are going to take right now, these three voltages, I don't know where you want to record them. I mean, you could record them in that column. Uh, I guess you could add a column to this table to put the new calculated resistances based on the digital voltmeter and then compare those to the analog values in that second column there. Anyway, um, I hope, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think I added any confusion by <laughs> by going on about that. Um, I mean, you probably are confused now, but if I didn't say anything when it, when it came time for you to do your analysis, um, I think you might be uh, uh, lost. So let's take these new digital values. I need the voltage across R1, which is going to be V1. So V1, if you want to look at figure eight, we're just doing the same uh, type of measurement um, as we did in the last section. V1, V1 is the voltage across R1. So Two point eight zero one, and for some reason I feel compelled to write that down. Who knows? Maybe I'll analyze this later. Two point eight zero one. And the scale, <clears throat> it's it's. <laughs> It's on automatic. I wonder if they really want you to. To make note of what scale, well, obviously. 20 volt. It's on the 20 volt scale, meaning it's going to measure up to 20 volts. And again, our digital value is 2.801. And the error is going to be plus or minus 0 0.005. And that has to do with um, the way this instrument is set up. The value of the last digit, um, it's well, plus or minus 5, whatever that last digit happens to be. So units, of course, are volts. Now let's move along to R2 in parallel with R3. So that's V2. I could just hook it again across R2, but to be a little more convincing that it is indeed across both of them, I'll hook it up there. 3349. I mean, look. Digital value 3.349, and it is, it is going to be on that same 20 volt scale. The error is again 0 0.005. Now we want the voltage across everything R1 and R2. R1, R2, again, I could hook up anywhere along any one of these wires. And 
and we are getting this number. Okay. 6.147. 6.147 volts. We are on the 20 volt scale. The air plus or minus 0 0.005. All right, we are making leaps and bounds here. I want to say that we're almost finished. Uh, I'm flipping pages and it's not ending. Okay, uh, let me put you on pause and get my unknown resistors. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, unknown resistors. We have uh, to, to, to the container holds three. Let me see the resistors connected and why. I'm on page 31 of the lab manual. Take a look at figure nine. We have that configuration right here. Those three resistors are connected like in a Y and they're encased in this uh, plastic and there are prongs on the other end to connect to the ends and we are going to determine what those three unknown resistors are and now <clears throat> do me a favor <coughs> excuse me your lab manual labels these as a b and c this here labels them as well they're color coded so let's say a is going to be equal to red, B will be equal to blue, and C will indicate yellow. That's just a way of us to keep track of what we're measuring. So, um, VAB, the voltage across AB, AB now is red and blue. So, I don't know how clear you can see this, red and blue. I'm going to connect across the red and blue. So what I have is my power supply, the positive terminal of the power supply goes right into my ammeter. My ammeter comes out and goes into the blue. Out of the red, it goes back into the power supply, the negative port of the power supply. So I'm getting a current through red and blue. And the current that I am getting out of red and blue is 1.19 but I am on the 0.5 scale so I got I have to divide by 10 0.119 amps scale is 0.5 so now let's see what the voltage is across those two resistors. Simply connect my voltmeter across those. And my volts are 6.0 volts. 6.0, the scale is on the 15, which gives us an error of plus or minus 0.5. So, uh, speaking of confusing lab manuals, uh, let me shed some quick light on table. Uh, the, the table we're filling out now on page 32, table 7. So, <clears throat> We just filled out the value scale and air for V, A, B, or V, red, blue, whichever way you look at it. We also did the current for A, B. The next uh, row is R, A, B. From the instructions that I've just read, they want you to determine the resistance of that combination of A and B, or red and blue. Uh, with uh, equation one or Ohm's law. So you would be able to fill out on that table a value for RAB, but 
you can't fill out a scale. We didn't measure it. I mean, we could measure it with the digital um, uh, multimeter. We could measure that resistance, but it's not asking us to. It's asking you to determine with that equation one what RAB is. So uh, no, nothing goes in that box under scale for RAB or any of the other R's on this table for that matter. I mean, if you want, you can determine its error with um, uh, because V has an error and I has an error uh, determining what R is and using uh, propagation of error techniques, you could put an error value in there, but you can't for scale. So anyway, let's continue. Let's measure the voltage and current across BC, or in our case, blue, yellow. So, blue, yellow, we're already in the blue. I'm gonna move this over to yellow. So we are now blue and yellow. Our volts is the same as it should be, 6.0. 6.0, we're on the 15 scale. For current, I am reading uh, 0.91. We are on the 0.5 scale, however, so we divide by 10. I'm getting 0 0.091 amps. And again, the scale is 0.5. So the next row for your RBC, that those are calculations. Now let's go down to VCA, or in our case, V yellow red. Okay, we're already in the yellow. I'm gonna move this connection to the red. Yellow, red, we are indeed on those top two ports. Uh, volts, 6.0 volts, doesn't change. 6.0 volts, we're on the 15 scale. For current, I'm getting 1.30, but of course, because of our scale, 0. 0.5, I need to divide by 10. So for the current, we have 0. 0.130 amps, scale is 0. 0.5. And we're done with this section. That table is for your um, final conclusion of what RA, RB, and RC is. And uh, for hand, yeah, it's very easy to uh, uh, to find. Um, in other words, I could f you could determine what the resistance across A and B is, right? Just using Ohm's law, VAB divided by IAB, and that'll give you RAB. So you do that for each one. Then you'd recognize that, for instance, RAB is equal to the resistance of A plus the resistance of B. RBC is equal to the resistance of B plus the resistance of C, and so on. So you'll end up with three equations and three unknowns. All right, let me get ready for the next uh, section. Let me put you on pause. Okay, students, we are now on the part labeled voltage divider, continuous resistor, and that is on page 33. And I want to say, um, it doesn't say use a digital ammeter or a digital voltmeter uh, for these measurements. So I, I, I just want to say, I am not going to use it, <laughs> an analog voltmeter. Uh, by the way, uh, prior to this video, I did the whole experiment just to make sure everything was in working order and the measurements that I give you are meaningful. Uh, nothing is defective and whatnot. If you're going to take the time to analyze this data, or I should say, if I am going to take the time and give it to you, I definitely want to make sure it's meaningful. Um, and um, when I, you may have noticed that when I give you a reading off the digital ammeter or voltmeter, I could, I'm 
telling you what that reading is rather quickly. It usually takes, you know, five seconds or so to really look at it and, and figure out where that needle is um, in, re in regards to those individual tick marks. Uh, but in the interest of time to make this video 40 minutes shorter, I went ahead and did it beforehand. Uh, but I do not want to do that with this uh, particular lab. What we're going to do is take, oh, I think the table has 13 rows of data. And um, for that reason, I'm going to use the digital uh, voltmeter. So it'll just spit out a number for us. Now, the table is table eight on page 33. And there is a diagram, uh, fig, uh, figure 10 of uh, the circuit that we're hooking up. This is our rheostat. Here is our power supply. The positive uh, terminal of our power supply is going into this part of the rheostat, just like in the diagram. The negative um, connection to the power supply is going into the right side of our rheostat. And in turn, our voltmeter is connected to the base here on the negative side. And this wire here is connected to the top of the rheostat. So we're gonna use this slider to go back and forth and alter the voltages and fill out that table. So here's our power supply. We don't care about that. So I'm going to move you closer. And there, I see that there's a glare on this multimeter. <clears throat> I'll read it out for you anyway. What I want to say first off is the rheostat position, the position, the units of that position are going to be units of percentages. In other words, there's a scale on top of this rheostat and it goes from zero to 10. And there are tick marks. Um, the minor tick marks are spaced out at 1% intervals. So, you know, when I'm halfway, when I'm at 50, I'm at 50% and so on. Um, because the, the tick marks are spaced out at 1% intervals, you know that um, the error associated with this slider would be half that amount or 0.5%. So write that in your table. The error is plus or minus 0.5% uh, percent, units of percent. And the output, vol output voltage, it'll depend on what our reading is. Remember, the last digit of the reading on our digital voltmeter um, gives us the error associated with that measurement. It'll be uh, plus or minus five, the five being in whatever place that that last digit is in. So let's go. Our table eight, the first row, we'll put it at zero. So zero and the output voltage is it's, it's reading 7.03 millivolts. We're gonna keep all of these in the same units, so we'll record them as volts. So that translates to 0 0.0702. 0 0.00702 volts. Now let's move this up to 10. Let's worry about the errors with that multimeter uh, when we're done. Okay, so we're at 10 now, and the output voltage is 0.5417. Now let's go to 20. Output voltage, 1.1326 volts. Let's go to 30. One point seven eight nine one. Now I'm going to go to 35. And that is because I just want to make sure that make sure that we fill every row there. And like I said, there are 13 rows. So I'll stop at 35 and our voltage is 2.0573. 2.05, 
0.73. Our next stop is 40% of the way. Our voltage is 2.371. 50% of the way. 3.032. Now we'll go to 60. Output voltage 3.579. 70. 70% 70 of the way gives us 4.184 volts. Now 75. Four point five two three. Four point five two three volts. We are now at eighty percent of the way, and that gives us four point eight three seven volts. Ninety. Ninety percent gives us 5.457 volts, 5.457. And our last point will be 100% of the way up, and that gives us 6.000 volts. Okay, let's see what the air associated with these numbers are. <clears throat> so it looks like from zero to 35, we were getting measurements that had five digits to the right of the decimal. some of our um, digits, why some of these measurements have more digits than others. What did I, I, there's no way I could have read that wrong. Okay, let me put you on pause and troubleshoot it. Okay, let me make this quick and easy for you. Um, I discovered what happened and yeah, first from zero to 35, it, uh, it does give you four digits uh, to the right of the decimal. Then at 40 and beyond, um, it drops off to three. They put a zero in the um, tens place. Um, so <laughs> let me say no more. Anyway, to make it quick and easy, this is what I would do if I were you. Um, from zero to 35, disregard that last digit so that all of your measurements only have three figures to the right of the decimal, then this will make it easy for you. In the air, it is simply plus or minus 0 0.005. And I believe you're supposed to graph that. And uh, let me put you on pause and we'll get to the next portion. Okay, coming to the home stretch. 
Ohm's law and measurement of an unknown resistance. This is on page 34. And uh, if you look at figure 11, we are going to hook up the circuit to the left. There's two circuits there with subtle differences. The one we're going to do now is to the left. Now, in the interest of time, a couple of things. One, I'm not going to trace out all these wires. You're just gonna to have to be convinced that I did indeed hook up the circuit on the left there. And uh, the other thing is that they do allow us or ask us or instruct us to use a digital uh, multimeter as a voltmeter, but they say use the um, analog ammeter. Uh, maybe that's because uh, each person, each desk only has one digital multimeter, so you can't use a digital um, multimeter as an ammeter simultaneously as you use the digital uh, uh, multimeter as a voltmeter, but we have another one here today, so I'm going to use this to measure current. There's no way in hell I'm gonna use that analog ammeter, and uh, for the very reasons that I mentioned before, um, hey, it's past one o'clock in the morning right now, and that would take me an additional half hour. So, oh, and uh, I'm saving you guys time as well. We're gonna, we're gonna use this for current. So let me, let's see. This is our unknown resistor. Currently, I don't know what it is. Um, we are going to determine what that is. I'm gonna move you in a bit because we don't care about looking at that power supply. We don't even care about looking at that resistor anymore. Let me shift things around here a bit if I can. Eh, I really can't. Um, all I care about are these three items and I put that there. Our lab manual instructs us to start off at zero. Now they say, hey, use your graph and uh, to put this at a position that gives you a half a volt and keep on moving it upwards at five volt increments. Now who made a graph at this point, right? You're in the lab taking this data, who steps away and makes a graph? Plus, why even use a graph? Just use your digital uh, uh, voltmeter and increase it at whatever interval you want. And while they're suggesting, uh, they're instructing us to do that at uh, 0.5 volt increment. So we'll go ahead and do that. So table nine, and we'll go over the errors um, after we take the data. Real step position, again, this is in units of percentage. So I am at 0%. My output voltage is 0 0.0087 volts. It's reading millivolts, but we'll convert it to volts. 0 0.00870. And our current, <coughs> excuse me, is zero. Zero current. That resistance there, uh, I'll leave that up to your instructor whether or not to explain that away. I, I, we're only working with one resistor, so what they want us to calculate that resistance, what, 13 different times? You're going to determine what the resistance of this resistor is anyway with this data by making a graph. I don't know if that was put there erroneously or what, that last column, but. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm overlooking something. It doesn't require any measurements anyway. So let's move on to the next row. Um, I am going to move this and keep an eye on the digital uh, voltmeter. And I want 0.5 volts or approximately. Okay, close enough. So um, the real stat position, let me get a good view of this. That is um, nine. So 
that's at 9%, and our voltage is 0.4986. And our current is 1. By the way, for current, at this point, just write down your units of milliamps. One point zero milliamps. You can convert it later. I know I told you before I would just be giving you the same units of amps, but uh, in the interest of time, um, let's just leave it as is. I don't know if we might have to switch over. No, I think we'll stay in the milliamp range. Well, anyway. Okay. Let's increase it up to one volt. Okay, close enough. Real step position. Let me take a look at it. That is a 19. Nineteen percent. Nineteen percent of the way up, we got 0 0.9964 volts, and our current is 2.0, 2.0 milliamps. Let me increase this to 1.5, or approximately, and. So my real step position is 28. 28% of the way up and I am getting 1.5130 volts. My milli <clears throat> This looks like it just died on me. It may have just timed out. Safety feature. My current, 3.1 milliamps. Now, let's go up to about two volts. My real step position is 38. Output voltage 1.9915 volts, 4.1 milliamps. Go up to about 2.5. I am at uh, forty-seven and a half. Forty-seven point five. And that gives me two point five twenty six volts. My current is at five. 0.3 milliamps. Let's go up to three. Real step position. Fifty five. At fifty five per cent, we are at two point nine. Five zero volts and our current is 6.2 milliamps. Now I'm looking for 3.5 volts. Real stat position is 66. 
66% of the way up gives me 3.577 volts. While the current is 7.5 milliamps. Go up to four. Seventy three percent of the way up on your rheostat position gives you three point nine nine six volts. Eight point four milliamps. Again, it's set at 0.5 volt increments. So I am at 82. The real step position is at 82, and that's 4.5, 42 volts, 4.5. Four two and nine point five milliamps, nine point five milliamps. Now we are at eighty seven. Five point zero three three volts, ten point six milliamps, we are now at ninety four. And that gives us 5.526, 5.526 volts, 11.6 milliamps. When we are 100% that gives us 5.966 volts while our current is 12.6 milliamps <laughs> okay let's get ready for the next part and if I'm not mistaken the grand finale Ladies and gentlemen, um, what I did was I reconfigured the location of our voltmeter. So now we have the circuit depicted in figure 11 on the right. So it almost looks the same, but it's not. And we are going to basically redo this, but now with the new setup. So the table we are going to be filling out is table 10 on page 35. And we are at zero. We are reading, um, let me write this down. Real stat position is 0%. Output voltage is 0 0.007.10. I'm sorry. 0 0.00709 volts. Our current is zero. By the way, um, I mentioned on the last segment that I'd uh, talk about the errors for a second, but um, well, let's see. The rheostat position, the error associated with that, you already know it's plus or minus a half, a half of a percent, plus or minus 0.5 percent. The output voltage, whatever output voltage you see on this digital multimeter, um, it's going to be plus or minus 5, plus or minus 5, whatever that last digit is. So in other words, plus or minus 0.05 millivolts for this particular reading. 
Um, we are using this um, instrument, this uh, multimeter for the current. I think that this is more accurate than plus or minus five of the last digit. Um, you can call that plus or minus two, whatever the last digit is, plus or minus two, as opposed to one, just to be safe, because we don't know exactly what it is. Or, <laughs> if you want, after all, you know what it is, an X-Tech. It, well, it's from X-Tech Instruments. It's Multimeter 410. Hey, go look it up. The, uh, see if the instruction manual indicates what the error is. Otherwise, plus or minus two would be safe. Uh, whatever the last digit is, two. So we've been using uh, this in its uh, milliamp range, so it would be plus or minus 0.2 milliamps. Anyway, let's continue. We want this to be at a position where we get about um, a half of a volt. So there we are. I'm going to move this up a bit so it's right on 10. So at 10% of the way we are at 0.5143 volts and that gives us a current of 1.0 milliamps. We'll go up to one volt. We are at 19. 19% of the way gives us 1.0026 volts and 2.1 milliamps. Let's go up to 1.5. So we are at 28.5. 28.5% gives us 1.5155. 1 1.5155 volts with a current of 3.1 milliamps. Thirty-eight. A position of thirty-eight yields two point zero five two two with four point three milliamps. I am forty seven point five at forty seven point five per cent we are at two point five two zero volts with five point three milliamps. Fifty six per cent gives us two point nine nine zero volts, six point three milliamps. Sixty five point five percent gives us 3.555 volts <clears throat> and our small multimeter shut itself off so 
So our current is 7.5 milliamps. At 73%, we are at 3.975 volts, 8.4 milliamps. At 81. We are at 4.481 volts, 9.5 milliamps. Eighty seven. gives us 4.998 volts and 10.6 milliamps. Ninety four. gives us 5.525 volts, 11.7 milliamps. And I just realized I don't have my AirPods on, so I don't know what the audio, well, I'm not moving around, so it should be fine. When we go to 100%, we're at 5.916 volts, and that gives us 12.5 milliamps. Now just remember, for this section and the previous one, all of our currents were recorded in milliamps, so when you do calculations or plot them, convert them, convert those units. And I say that because the lab manual asks you to. And let me put you on pause for just a second. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a lot to sift through. And uh, we're done, that's it. Two week lab, finished. Well, we got the analysis to do, but uh, I wanted to say there are three, uh, first and foremost, three things that I have in mind when I put these together. Uh, one is that you get accurate information and uh, meaningful data. Uh, the other is that um, you, you gain uh, lab experience, the, the closest or the, or the best we can do considering these circumstances where we can't actually show up to campus. Uh, and the third would be making something uh, <laughs> concise and uh, um, and, and, and as short as possible. I mean, th this was a long video, but um, you know, you, you're putting your uh, uh, time, energy, and money in, into learning physics, taking this course. So these are for this this video is for those of you who want to get the most out of it. Um, typically, um, um, they're not as long as this, but it was a two-week lab. Um, personally. Hey, I enjoyed working with you, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>